since it was John Schneider's debut as interim manager of the Jays a day after the firing of Charlie Montoyo. And joining us to talk about it is our good friend Mike Wilner, longtime host of Jays Talk from the Deep Left Field podcast and the Toronto Star. Mike, you've been just nuclear on Twitter this week. I've loved it. And the Jays, I got that win in Mr. Schneider's debut. Uh, your thoughts on the firing of Charlie Montoyo? Everybody seemed kind of surprised that it came down. Were you? Yeah, I was at the time. And then after being at the ballpark and talking to a bunch of people, I was a little less surprised, but still surprised. I mean, I had thought that the Blue Jays um, were very happy with Charlie and uh, that, you know, he was there to implement their plan. He was there to, to keep the clubhouse atmosphere uh, positive. And there had never been any indication that they weren't happy with the job he was doing. But then yesterday at the news conference, or Ross Atkins kept saying, we wanted it to work with Charlie. We wanted it to work with Charlie. And very clearly, that means that it wasn't working with Charlie. And, um, and they, they felt like this was a move they had to make in order to make sure that they stopped the spiral that the team was on and got it back into the position in the standings where they believe it should be. Well, you've covered baseball a long time. You know the game. You've been around a lot of Jays managerial firings. It seemed to me as simple as the team is more talented than what their record indicates, which usually leads to a firing. But they just they just send them into extension in the offseason, though, right? Would you not agree they're better than their record indicates or not? Well, I mean, at some point you are what your record says you are, but I do believe that this is a team that has the – easy capability to be better than its record but you know one of the reasons it was surprising was because this kind of stuff hasn't happened in baseball in a long time it, it's it's used to for sure a lot mid-season managerial changes and it's very much still a thing in hockey um but in baseball i think until this season there hadn't been a mid-season manager firing in three or four years. And then this year, Joe Girardi gets blown up by the Phillies, Joe Madden by the Angels, and now Charlie. So uh, that's three in the last month and a half and none in the three years before that. So, you know, that was another reason that it was surprising because this sort of thing had stopped for a while in baseball. Well, everybody wants to look forward, and I get that, but let me just ask you this. In the pantheon of Jays skippers, where does Charlie Montoyo rate? How will he go down besides a career 500? I mean, he did get into the playoffs. They got swept, right, in, the, in two games against the Rays a couple of years ago. But where do you rate him all time for Jays managers? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a longish list, 13 or 14 <laughs> managers in Blue Jays history. I don't know where. Uh, to, to put Charlie specifically on the ranking on that list, he'd be above quite a few and uh, below a couple. Um, but look, this is the guy who guided the team through the most tumultuous uh, period in the history of the franchise, and and he deserves recognition for that. The you know the the fact that he uh, had his hands on the controls last year where they played home games in Dunedin for two months, home games in Buffalo for another two months, didn't get off the road until July 30th. They played their first like hundred games of the season on the road. Um, that, that deserves great recognition and, and uh, a real position in the, the, you know, the franchise history, what, uh, what he had to go through, what they had to go through and uh, to finish with 91 wins to have the best record or the second best record in the league after they got home on July 30th, that's really, really significant to get manager of the year votes. You know, Charlie Montoya was a finalist for manager of the year last year, and most Blue Jays managers have never been in that conversation. So um, I, I definitely think that this isn't a tenure that will be quickly forgotten. From our viewers. Tacona in Winnipeg says, middle of the road, Charlie. <laughs> From David Santa, he says, God, Mike's voice is awesome. Isn't it? And I particularly liked your scathing reaction to idiot callers on Jay's talk. Now you're just doing it on Twitter, right? Like you've had a, not vile week, but a volatile week on social media, Mike. Would you not agree? Going back and forth with people? 
I mean, it, it got a little rough last week in uh, at the beginning of the Seattle series to the point where I just stopped responding to people for a few days because it was, it, you know, I, I'm wasting my time and, and I've wasted <laughs> far too much time and spent far too much time on on people who are just screaming into the ether and hoping to get a reaction. But um, look, it's it, when a team's not doing well. Um, Fans feel entitled to better. Um, they start looking for someone to blame. They start looking for someone to yell at. And uh, it's it's getting to be a little, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit over right now. But, uh, you know, I try to engage in good faith discussions on, on Twitter. And when it becomes apparent that the person that I'm discussing things with is not operating in good faith, then I'm just going to get out of there. But if, you know, if there are factual corrections that need to happen, then I I feel like I need to get the real story out, get the truth out. I don't like when people are angry and wrong about why they're angry. And I figure if they uh, maybe if they understand the truth, they won't be as angry. But I'm starting to give up on that, too. Buddy, they'll never listen. Just so you know, they'll never listen. But, Mike, you just be you. And that's enough because you're great. Now, to look ahead, um, and this is like a stick of dynamite went off in the, in the Jays' locker room, which I think was the goal of this firing. What do you see ahead? I mean, you'd like to think that professional athletes don't need motivating, but I guess they do. Um, so John Schneider's coaching for his job the rest of the year, or what? What, what? what lies ahead here with this baseball team? Look, it feels like John Schneider's been the heir apparent uh, for this organization since Charlie Montoyo was hired. I mean, they could have given Schneider the job then, but I don't think they, well, I think they wanted him to have a little bit of an apprenticeship in the major leagues. And I also think they didn't want him to start with a terrible team. And the 2019 Blue Jays were a terrible team, which is, you know, why that whoever said middle of the road, Charlie needs to take a serious look. You know, he, he got, a brutal team that lost 95 games and that was gutted throughout the course of the season. And in 2020 and 21 and 22, they were a winning team and very much above 500. I think over the, the three years, they were probably close to 30, 35 games over 500. So that's what Charlie did when he actually had major league players and, and a major league team. And he wasn't running Sam Gavilio out there. To, to lead the team in innings pitch. Um, but I think the rest of the way, I don't think we're going to see much of a tactical change. You know, John Schneider's been the bench coach this season and really the de facto bench coach last season too. So he's had a hand in what the Blue Jays have been doing strategically. Pete Walker has a lot to say about that. I don't think that's going to change. I, I just think there's going to be a different energy around the team and a different energy uh, in the dugout, and and that may well be palpable. We'll be able to see it, and I think the players are going to really appreciate that. Uh, lastly, from Ultra Tough Scene in on YouTube, watching says the kids need to stop being treated like kids and more like pro baseball players. Tough love needed from Giuseppe says I follow Mike's podcast Deep Left Field, and that's why that's my weekly fix of Blue Jays here in Italy. Keep up the good work. And we'll end it on that, Mike, for all your legion of fans. And I say that, uh, I mean it. Where can they follow your stuff? Well, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wilnerness, where I've been for years and years and years. And as that, uh, uh, as Giuseppe just mentioned, wow, in Italy. Uh, Deep Left Field Podcast comes out every Thursday. A new episode just dropped like 10 minutes ago. And it's a uh, very, very in-depth detail about uh, the firing of Charlie Montoyo, the hiring of John Schneider. I talked to Jordan Romano, who was, you know, he's the closer now, but he was John Schneider's ace starter for two championships in the minor leagues in 2017 and 18. So they know each other very well. I talked to Ross Stripling every week, and uh, Stripling was coming off a phenomenal start last night, and we talked about that. We talked about Charlie Montoyo's firing and and what uh, what they think will happen. And also this week, uh, Ricky Tiedemann, who is 19, who's pitching for Vancouver and who is the top pitching prospect in the Blue Jays system. So uh, go find Deep Left Field wherever you get your podcast. We're not on YouTube yet like you, but we'll get there maybe. Hey, Mike, you rock, buddy. Thanks for popping on today and keep on keeping on. Talk soon. Thanks, Rod.
Blue Jays broadcaster, Mike Wilner. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.